Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the R-Rated Show. I'm your host, Josh. Welcome to my review of Dr. Sleep. Saw it yesterday. Was going to do my review last night. Needed to take a night to let it gestate my brain, you know? Just let things trickle down and let those thoughts sort of congeal together. Um, it was a heavy movie, you know? It was a lot of moving parts, a lot of things going on, a lot of things to consider. So I decided to wait till today to do my review. And... Um, this was directed by Mark Flanagan, uh, who you may know from Gerald's Game, which was excellent on Netflix. I really enjoyed that a lot. thought it was really well done. Um, sucked me right in. And then also, uh, what was the other one? He did a series, A House, The Haunting of Hill House, uh, also Netflix. And um, he had some big shoes to fill uh, to do this sequel. And that is because it's a direct sequel to... Stanley Kubrick's 1980 uh, masterpiece, The Shining, starring Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall, which I absolutely love that movie. So it was really hard not to be like a dick walking into this movie and thinking it's got to live up to that. And I've truly tried to keep an open mind and just let it be what it was and know that, you know, you know, Shining's over here and always will be in a special place and just, you know, Try to hope for a good movie. Let it be its own thing. It's not going to be a Kubrick, you know, puzzle to figure out. It's not going to be some stroke of genius. It's a sequel. So, you know, I, I just went in with an open mind and I'm being optimistic. And, um, you know, that was pretty good. This movie stars Ewan McGregor uh, and what's her name? Rebecca Ferguson and Kaylee Curran. And uh, those are the three main characters of the movie. And this movie is essentially a triangle of three important characters that all converge together into the Overlook Hotel um, to have a conflict. And um, my initial thoughts are that, um, you know, the reason why The Shining works so good is because it was um, this horrible thing that took place in a supernatural sort of microcosm where you only had a handful of characters, I mean, a small amount of characters um, that were all very close, um, bumping into each other in this terrible, terrible place. And, you know, um, the interesting thing about it was that, uh, you know, our main character, Jack, went from a good man, a troubled man, but a good man, to this monster uh, who is controlled by the spirits of the Overlook Hotel, right? Um, and there is that that to me is, is a brilliant situation um, for the movie to exist in. Um, it's very claustrophobic, you know what I mean? Like that just winds up the terror. And um, so this movie does the exact opposite. I mean, it, it breaks it wide open. Uh, Danny's an adult now and he's a broken man and he's learning how to deal with, um, you know, what had happened to him. And his father be dying and the horrible events that plagued him and his mother. And learning to deal with like being different and having these powers and being able to shine and, and talk to other ghosts and other people who shine and whatever. I mean, that's a heavy thing for a kid. He's a broken man and uh, living a terrible life and decides to change things, moves to a small town and change his life. He meets a man who recognizes the symptoms of alcoholism in him. And decides to give him a break and help us up a new life. And then we fast forward. We see that he's, you know, changed his life and become a different person uh, through, you know, companionship, friendship, and AA. And, you know, becomes an orderly in a hospice. And you see the depth of his compa uh, compassion for people and how he how he's connected to not only uh his life on earth but you know this this plane of existence that we can't see but we all kind of know is there and it's a really interesting sort of metaphysical aspect of this whole thing that we didn't really see too much in the shining because everything there was more symbolic um and that was interesting to see it played out in a practical way and it also expanded his character a little bit um you know danny was really kind of more one note and the shining and Danny here, Dan is more, we see a more of a spectrum of, you know, him as a human being. And, uh, that's good. You know, as good character building, you know, good things, bad things, 
uh, challenges in life and, uh, you know, what's his, what's his strength of character. And we learned that he's very strong and, um, I enjoyed that a lot. I really like Ewan McGregor a lot in this movie and he's great actor. I feel like he brings a lot of genuineness to his characters. He's very likable and this character needs to be likable, um, to care about it through all these horrible things. And he didn't really even start off that as very likable for some of the things that he did. But we can understand, you know, that he was a lost soul. So, um, essentially, uh, the movie carries on. We, we meet we meet the, uh, the central uh, villain immediately, this character named Rose, played by Rebecca, I always forget her last name, Ferguson. I want to say Flanagan, it's Ferguson. Uh, you, she was in some Mission Impossible movies and some other things, and she's really did a bang up job in this movie because I fucking hated her in this movie. And any actor or actress who can do that and, and sell me a villain that I really can't stand and you want to see their demise did a good job. And I really liked that she played this weird sort of um, gypsy witch, you know, cult leader sort of thing. Essentially, there's this group of bandits and they search around for other shining individuals so they can murder them and consume their essence because they want to live for as long as they can they want to have a it's all about longevity it's not immort immortality but it's longevity of life and some of them are over a hundred years old you know and so the way they do that is they um ingest they consume they you know take the essence of these other people who have these abilities um by capturing them when they're young murdering them and consuming this mist that comes out of their mouth. And I like that aspect. All right. I mean, I guess we had to have a big bad villain. Um, so it was a group of bandits. And um, they, the third part of this, this movie has three parts. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But the third protagonist, or the second protagonist, or the, you know, central character is this girl, uh, Abra Stone, played by. Kylie Curran, um, where she's like the one of the most powerful shining individuals that exists on Earth apparently, and she has all these powers and thinks she could do things at a young age that most people that sort of dwarf the abilities of these other shining characters, and so she gets drawn into the story through Dan, who they just have a connection and. There's a very Stephen King-esque way they sort of find each other and communicate. And so they're drawn to each other. And then it, it turns out, essentially, the, the group of bandits, they find out about the girl. They want to kill her to get the essence so they because they're struggling to survive because there aren't as many shining individuals out there. I won't get to the whole story. I don't want to bring it down and be boring, but... These three things, think of a triangle coming to a center point, essentially, is what's happening here. And um, eventually, all roads lead to a conflict that they overlook. And so they're recreating. The, the set pieces were amazing. They recreate the overlook aged because essentially after what happened with Jack and his family, they closed it down. It's been deteriorating ever since. So it's 40 years of time has lapsed. And everything's just exactly the way it was, but it's just now dilapidated. So they all got to have this conflict right there at the end. And you're just rooting for this woman to die. Like, you just hate her. And um, I was there's a thrilling part of the movie. There's a lot of... The movie has a lot of ins and outs where, you know, um, there's a lot of wins and losses for the good guys. And so, you know, the tension's building, and you're like, God, you know... What's going to happen? And that was really fun. That was really thrilling. I really enjoyed that. Um, the movie did not bore me. It did feel like it dragged a little bit in parts. It's a long movie. It's two hours. But uh, it, it always brought me back in pretty quickly. And um, all the performances were really good. Even though the girl, uh, Kylie Curran, the, seemed like maybe there was a day or two where she, she was maybe off. But... Um, for the most part, she gave a great performance and I really enjoyed her as Aberstone. Um, but so they all end up in the hotel at the end and, uh, have a big conflict. And then it goes beyond that, which I wasn't expecting, which was cool. 
So it was essentially two villains in this movie. And um, I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a yes for me. Don't try to compare it to the original Shining. Just try to think of it as an add-on to Danny's story and let it, you know, if you ever wonder what happened to Danny uh, after, you know, they escaped the hotel and uh, Jack dies in the maze, then this will be, uh, you know, if you're a big Shining fan, I think you'll enjoy this movie. It's really a shame that, um, you know, movies like this don't get supported. It's not, it's failing at the um, at the theater right now. I mean, it's bad, the box office is not carrying this movie, unfortunately. And uh, it's really a shame because of all the movies to make a sequel to, this one, you think people would be interested in it. The problem is I think that people don't really, most general population people who watch movies casually don't really know about the shining or care it's not one a movie that pops up on tv or cable or streaming service that often um it's talked about a lot by cult film followers and horror fans but it's not really uh, it's a long long heavy movie that most people probably don't get because kubrick was very eccentric um so you, I think it's either love hate, it's a love hate sort of thing, but it's not mainstream, you know. And so this movie is sort of maybe just, I mean, it's marketed in a way that lets you know it's about The Shining, but I don't think many people know about The Shining. So it's out there in the middle of November after Halloween, and I think it just was a, you know, it just couldn't overcome that, and so it's losing money, unfortunately. I think it's a really good movie. If you have a chance, it's still in theaters. Go out and see it. I highly recommend it. It's a yes from me for sure. All the performances were really good. Great villain. Great nostalgia. Cool callbacks. Uh, one real quick, um, uh, if I'm going to criticize the movie a little bit, they want to add it. They want to bring in elements of the first movie into this one. I don't know if it's for fan service or to deepen the character stories or to wrap certain things up or just because it needed to be there. But, you know. They had to recast some of the actors from from the 1980 movie, speaking specifically of Shelley Duvall and Jack Nicholson. And those two people are so dynamic in their character. You know, they're so memorable as actors that, you know, they recast them in this movie and it really falls short, unfortunately. And that was a bit distracting and it was disappointing. Uh, didn't care for that too much. I like the scenes that they were in, and I like especially um, the scene where Danny and Jack have a their face to face. Uh, but it, the problem was the they had an approximation of these actors to play those roles, but it didn't feel like them. And in this day and age of technology with deep fakes and facial, you know, CGI and all that, you, you would have thought that they would have you know, maybe done something like that to, to really make it pop out like it's legit and they didn't do that and that bugged me. But the scenes they were in were really good. It's a minor gripe and an overall really good movie. The stuff at the Overlook, the sets were amazing and it felt really good to be back at the Overlook Hotel and things, the conflicts that happened in there were a lot of fun and creepy. And I mean, I got, I mean, it really was heavy. It is I really had that essence of of the shining, you know, that really just sort of dread. They they found that. They found it in there, but it works better in a smaller sphere. With three big moving parts where they can literally like astral project from one end of the continent, the United States, to the other end of the continent, the United States. I don't know if that works as good, but they did manage to come up with a really good villain and some cool peripheral characters and make it fit into a modern day world just fine. So I'd say, yeah, this is a great movie. Definitely get it. Uh, check it out on streaming. Go to the movies and see it. Support it and get it on Blu-ray when it comes out. You could definitely binge The Shining and this one back to back if you're a huge horror nerd. And um, yeah, get out there and see it, guys. Support it. And uh, if you like this content, please hit the subscribe button and interact you know leave your own personal opinion in the uh, comments below i like to interact and i'll respond most likely to your comment and uh yeah i'm trying to get to a thousand subs so if you can please subscribe i really appreciate that 
And that's pretty much my review of The Shining. So, guys, until next time, stay awesome, stay R-rated. Cheers. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, we've got a lot of great content coming for you this year. We've got reviews for movies, comics, and more. And, of course, we will always have fan commentaries for the movies you love. Lots of uh, talk about horror and uh, just mainstream pop culture in general. And uh, probably some Star Wars stuff leading up to Rise of Skywalker. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. And uh, yeah, become a fan of the channel. Let's hear what you want to see. Leave a comment below and uh, just let me know what you think. All right, guys. Talk to you later.